This is a film I made many years ago with family and friends at home. See if you can guess exactly when. Most of the information in it still seems relevant, even if the fashions have changed. So we're making it available again for your interest and enjoyment. See what you think. The one single fact that makes or mars the enjoyment of any wine is serving it at the right temperature. Tepid white wine tastes flat, icy red wine tastes yeah. And as for icy white wine, you can hardly taste it at all. It does take a bit of forethought, but the cardinal rule is that wine should be refreshing. For most white wines, perfect storage temperature, the chill of your cellar in fact, is ideal for drinking them too. The domestic fridge at 44 degrees is really a bit too cold unless the weather's very hot and the wine's going to warm up quickly. In any case, a fridge is a very bad conductor of heat. The only really efficient way of removing all the extra heat from the bottle is total immersion in the perfect conductor, which is icy water. An ice bucket full of ice alone is not at all efficient. But put cold water in with the ice and the whole surface of the bottle is rapidly chilled. An ice bucket should be deep enough to immerse the whole bottle. If it isn't, you simply stick the neck in first, then after a few minutes, reverse the process till it's all nice and cold. Eight minutes in icy water is enough to lower the temperature from 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 55 degrees. And that would take a whole hour in an ordinary refrigerator. The trouble with small ice cubes is that they melt like snow in summer. The bigger the block of ice you use, the longer it'll last. When I'm chilling several bottles, say for a summer Sunday lunch in the garden, I make icebergs as big as a baby's head. Or I fill polythene bags with water, just not the top, and stick them in the deep freeze. Once the wine is cold enough, there's some very pretty and practical things to keep it cold. This one works on the principle of a milk cooler, and this insulated thermos-like thing simply traps the cold air that falls from the bottle. What to do if you're caught without any of these gadgets clutching a warm bottle of wine? A rudimentary back-of-the-car technique is to roll it in a well-soaked newspaper and hold it in a draught. Evaporation does the trick. In a hotel bedroom, I use a wet towel. Your perfect picnic spot, of course, has a chattering stream at 49 degrees. But make sure the bottle is safe. The smoothest piece of wine upmanship that I've ever seen was the man who prepared the ground for a spot of dalliance in advance. He went to his secret spot the day before. He took a spade. He dug a hole. And he buried a cold bottle of champagne. out of doors is the common sense precaution of keeping the bottle and your glass out of the sun if there is any and having good sturdy glasses that won't break Even some red wines 
like these cans of Beaujolais need keeping cool. But don't lose them in the stream. Unexpectedly, getting red wine to the right temperature often presents more problems than white. Room temperature, or chambre, is the traditional gauge for the right level for red wine, but the phrase was coined before the days of central heating. It meant closer to 60 degrees than the modern idea of comfort, which is 70 or more. At 70 degrees, reds lose their attractive cut. They're no longer refreshing. It begins to be the alcohol you smell and taste, more than the fruit. Your kitchen may be the perfect place to let red wine gradually reach the right temperature. But what if you're in a hurry? And you can't wait 12 hours or so. I have seen people put bottles in front of a red-hot fire to roast like joints on a spit. That does them no good at all. I much prefer the direct method of simply putting the decanter in a bucket of hot water. Water at 70 degrees Fahrenheit will raise the temperature from 55 degrees to 65 degrees in eight minutes, just as surely as icy water will lower it. Of course, if you're decanting the wine, do that first. This is a magnum decanter, so it'll take a bit more than eight minutes, but at least it's all completely under my control.